Okay, let's say we've got an expression that looks like this. 2x plus brackets 2x minus 1. How are we supposed to try and simplify this? Because we've got x in two different places, which means we've got to actually simplify it as much as we can so that we only get x in one place instead of two. But there's brackets here, and we know that we've got to do brackets first. So how should we think about that? Well, in fact, we should actually think that in front of this bracket, there's actually just a one sign. Um, and what's ever outside the front of this bracket is multiplied by what's ever inside the bracket. So if I was to simplify this expression, my first 2x, haven't done anything there, there's no brackets, it stays the same. Then I have to think that everything outside the bracket has to be multiplied by everything inside. So I have the number here, plus 1. And I have to multiply that plus 1 first by 2x. Plus 1 multiplied by 2x will give me, well, plus 1 times plus 2 is plus 2. 2 what? It will give me 2x's. So plus 1 times 2x will give me 2x. Anything multiplied by 1 is the same thing. And then we have to say, okay, we've finished multiplying our x's here. Now I have to multiply this plus 1 by what else is in the bracket. Plus 1 times minus 1 is minus 1. So now I've got rid of the brackets. Quite simply, I've multiplied plus 1 by everything in the bracket. And because it was just plus 1 multiplied, of course, it's going to be exactly the same thing afterwards. Anything multiplied by 1 is the same. So now I have 2x plus 2x. Well, I know that 2 plus 2 is 4. So 2x plus 2x must equal 4x minus 1. So I've now expanded those brackets, take it, that means taken the brackets away, and changed this expression into the form 4x minus 1. And now I can't do anything with that expression anymore because I actually don't know what x is. x could be 1, it could be 2, it could be 5, it could be a million. Whoever's gave us that equation haven't given us an exact value of x. So until they do that, I keep it in the term 4x minus 1. Let's take another example then, but this time I've got a minus sign inside the front. Well, it's the same thing, the same way of thinking, that in front of, uh, just after the minus sign is actually in front of a bracket, it's a 1 multiplied by. So here we have two apples, nice red apples here, two apples, 2a, two stays the same, we haven't done anything there, minus 1 times a. Now this is where we need to know our theory of minus numbers. A minus times a plus will always give us a minus. So I know that a minus 1 times plus a will give me a minus in my answer. 1 times a is going to give me a. So I finish multiplying through my first term in the expression. Now I have to multiply minus 1 times minus b. Well, my knowledge of minus signs is a minus times a minus actually always equals positive. So before I do anything here, I write in my positive sign, and then I say 1 times b is b. So think signs first, and then think numbers or, um, or let's the alphabet. Okay. So what am I doing? I'm saying that I have, for example here, I've got two apples. Someone comes along and eats one of them, so they're taking away one, and i got one banana. So this expression in maths would be 2a minus a gives me a plus b. Can I do anything? Well, no, there is no such thing as an apple banana. Uh, so we can't do anything else. We can't add these a apples and bananas to turn them into apple bananas because apple bananas don't exist. Okay, So we keep, this is the answer to our expression, 2a minus brackets a minus b actually simplifies quite easily to a plus b. What do we do then when there's different numbers here in front of the brackets? Well, if we were to do 3a minus 2 brackets b plus a, we'd use exactly the same technique We'd think of it as being a little multiply sign there. And we would first take 3a. We haven't changed anything there. There's no brackets to do. My pen isn't working very well. Let's try again. Equals 3a 
minus 2 times plus b. There's no sign in front of the b, so that always means it's a plus in front of it. A minus times a minus is going to give us a minus. 2 times b is going to give us 2b. Then we finish the b's. Then we have minus 2 multiplied by a. Minus times a plus is always going to give us a minus. 2 times a is going to give us 2a. And this is the tricky thing here, and this is the thing that I see that you most often forget, is that you remember the minus sign when it comes to multiplying by the b, and you get the answer minus 2b, but you forget that it's still a minus 2 multiplied by the plus a. So there's two minuses in this expression, okay? Then we can simplify. 3a minus 2a will give us a, uh, the minus 2b. There's no other B terms, so that's the answer. Let's look at another one then. Here we've got a minus sign and quite a long string here. Same principles again. We start with our 2B. We leave the 3A exactly where it is because the first thing we're going to work out is actually working out the brackets. Here we have minus times 2A. Think of it as being minus 1. Minus 1 times 2A will give me minus 2A. Minus 1 times plus b will give me minus b plus 3a. Now we look at our different terms together. And first we're looking at terms that are apples. And then we're looking to find any terms that are bananas. And we're adding them separately. So let me look at my apple terms first. Because a comes before b in the alphabet. And it's usual that we start with the first letter of the alphabet. So let's look for a's. I've got 3a here. And a minus 3a, that's going to give me 0, and then a minus 2a. So I will have minus 2a, 3 minus 3 is 0, minus 2 is minus 2. And then I have plus 2b minus 2b. So plus 2 minus 1 is b, just b by itself. So I'd get minus 2a minus plus b. Because we've actually got the uh, minus sign in front of the a, we could actually write that as b minus 2a. Both of those expressions mean the same thing. Okay, so what do we do then when we've got um, an expression where we've actually, we're going to get some quite um, different types of expressions now. We're actually going to get x squareds in this um, algebraic equation. So... What do we do? Well, we do the same thing as before. The 5x and the 3y haven't changed at all. And now I have to multiply minus 2x by x. Well, a minus times a plus is going to give us a minus. 2x multiplied by x is going to give me 2x squared. x times x is the same as x squared. Then I finish multiplying this term. I can ignore it now. Then I get minus 2x times plus 2y. Well, minus 2 times plus 2 is going to give me minus 4. And x times y is going to give me xy. Any two algebraic expressions multiplied by each other just come straight after each other. And you always put the first letter of the alphabet first. So x times y will give me xy equals 10. Now I have to look if I can uh, simplify this expression anyway. Well, no, actually, there's nothing I can do to simplify this expression. Because here I have x squareds, but here I only have x. And x and x squareds are not the same thing. So the only thing I can do here is actually reorganize it so it looks a little bit neater. We always start with the highest order of x first. So I would rewrite this equation as minus 2x squared minus, then I would put in my mixed terms, here's x's and y's together, minus 4xy. Then I'd put in my x terms, plus 5x plus 3y equals 10. And there's actually not much more I can do with that equation. So it would stay as it is. X squared terms cannot just be added to X terms. They are totally different things. Let's think of 
x as being 9. If x equals 9 and y equals 4. I could actually, if I knew the values of x and y, I could actually solve this equation now. Wherever I see x, I put in the value of 9. So let me rewrite this equation. Minus 2 times x I now know is 9. So I put in x squared must be 9 squared. Minus 4 times x. I know that x is 9. So I would put in a 9 there. And I know that y is 4. Plus 5 times x. Substitute x for 9. 5 nines plus 3 times y, well I know that y equals 4. Um, and actually we don't, now that we've put substitutes in here, we don't know that it's going to equal 10 because now we've actually given it a different, different value. So um, we can take away the 10 here because actually I've given different values for x and y that are definitely not going to give me the answer 10. Okay, so now we can actually uh, solve this then. So, um, what does this equation equal when x equals 9 and y equals 4? Well, 81, two nine, uh, 9 squared is 81, and we multiply that by minus 2, giving us minus 162. Four 4s are 16. 16 times 9 we can work out. 9, 6, 54. 9, 1's 9, plus 5, 14. So we get minus 144, plus 5, 9's 45, plus 3, 4's 12. So then we just have to work this one out. We've got a lot of negative numbers here and positive numbers, and this is good practice of what we, get, we did in the beginning of the book. Let's just let, make a little space here. What do we do when we're adding and subtracting negative numbers? Well, the first thing we do is we add the positive numbers here. 45 and 12. Pretty simple to do in our head. That will give us 57. And then 162 plus 144. So here we are adding together our positive numbers and here we're just adding together our negative numbers. And we can also do this one in our head. 306. 162 plus 44 is 306. But these are actually our negative numbers. So now we have minus 306 minus 306, minus 57. Actually, plus, huh? Yep, you're right. It's Monday morning. Uh, minus 306 and plus 57. What we do when we've got uh, negative numbers and positive numbers is actually we ignore the fact that this was a minus 306. We have the basic rule of subtracting and adding negative numbers that we always take the negative number away from the positive. Uh, this, the largest number is at the top and we put the smallest negative number at the bottom. So 6 take away 7, can we do that? No. We need to borrow one. So we've borrowed one from the 3 but there's nothing there to borrow. So we need to go all the way back and borrow from the 2 turning this one into a 10, which we then borrow one from that, turning that into a 9. So we now get 16 take away 7, gives us 9. And we borrowed one earlier, so we now have a 9 here. 9 take away 5, giving us 4. And 2 take away 0, giving us 2. So the answer is going to be 249, but because the largest number was a negative number, our final answer is going to be minus 249. So that's how we can actually work out. First we simplify in terms of x and y's. Then we just put the numbers in, crunch the numbers, and solve the equation. Okay.